verses 38 to 42. Luke 10, 38 to 42. I was on the phone with my mom yesterday, right? And uh, I was just letting her know that I was going to be preaching today. And um, I told her I was a little bit nervous because I didn't have everything that I was going to say at the time. And she stopped me right there and she said, don't be nervous. I was like, why? She said, because they don't care what you have to say. And I was like, a little bit offended. And then she said, they want to hear what God has to say. <laughs> and she's right. And if God's not in our messages, if, if he's not behind the work that we ever desire to accomplish, then everything we'd say and do is in vain, to be honest. So Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42 Bible says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, does not I care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Man, I know we love to, to talk about revival. Because honestly, we want to see God do a great work of revival. But before we start talking about God doing a great revival in our nation, or maybe even in our school, or in the lives of other people, let me ask you this. Does your reverence toward God need a revival today? Think about it. Does your reverence toward God need a revival today? Do you respect God like you should? Think about it. Do you respect God and give Him the honor that He deserves? I would suppose it to be true that one of the greatest hindrances for Christians and seeing God do a great work in their heart and seeing God do a, a great work in their life, seeing God move, would be pride. It would be ourselves. Because pride will cause us to be consumed with ourselves and consumed with our worry, consumed with our own cares and what we got going on. And before you know it, we'll be like Martha and we'll get in Jesus' face. And even though we desire to do a work for the Lord, like Martha was preparing, preparing for the Lord and his disciples, we can get a bad attitude. And Martha said, hey Jesus, don't you see what I'm doing? Lord, does that not care that my sister's leaving me to serve by myself? Tell her to help me. And despite the fact that she was serving, despite the fact that she was preparing for the Lord and his disciples, Jesus had to rebuke her because her heart was in the wrong place. And yet as Christians, if we ever want to see God do a great work in our life, if we ever want to see God move, then it's going to take humility, man. Humility. Well, like John in chapter 3 will say, you know what, if Christ is going to increase, then we must decrease. We must be made nothing. See, it's really easy to talk about ourselves and to bring attention to ourselves. Because a lot of times we love to gain recognition for our good works. But it's so hard to take the lowest position, like Mary, to sit at Jesus' feet. Because as men, we love to take the glory for ourselves. We see humility evident in Mary as she sat at Jesus' feet. I kind of pictured in my mind, as soon as Jesus came into the household with his disciples and sat down, she just runs to Jesus, literally sits down by his feet, just le leaning on his legs, desiring to hear every word that he spake. Amen. Think about it, man. Sitting at somebody's feet. It's a picture of devotion, of worship. It's also a picture of humility and reverence. Now ask yourself, will I be like Martha and get at Jesus' face? Or will I be like Mary and get at Jesus' feet? Let's <laughs> go. So today I want to share with you men a few truths that will help us in our walk with God to have a revived reverence toward God, a renewed love, a renewed devotion. And first off, I want to say, don't take your eyes off of the Lord Jesus. Let's read verse 40. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. That word cumbered is like to be hindered by, to be troubled. Unable to concentrate because one's mind is preoccupied. Martha was troubled. She was hindered by her own serving. Yeah. And that's the interesting that I find here. She was actually trying to serve the Lord, preparing for Him. Yeah. She had brought in the Lord and His disciples, showing her hospitality. Probably setting the table, setting her house in order. Probably preparing the food for Him. But in doing so, 
she got a bad spirit as soon as she saw her sister Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. But consider the custom of that day and age, man. It was not customary for women to be sitting at the, at the teacher's feet, like a student would with the teacher. It was normal for the women, especially when there was an honored guest in the home, to prepare, to set the house in order, to prepare the food. So you can imagine Martha was probably surprised by Jesus' response when he rebuked her. But Jesus was showing Martha that despite the culture of that day and age, despite the traditions of man, the customs of man, your love for the Lord is more important than your many duties. Oh, how important it is for us to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus and not on other things. Consider a pre professional runner in his race, a professional runner. As he's approaching the finish line, he has his eyes fixed on the, um, at the finish line, right? But say he's about 10 meters off from the finish line. Do you think he's going to take his eyes off that end goal and probably look to the audience to see whether or not they're applauding for him? Or do you think he's going to look behind himself to see how close are my opponents to me? No. Definitely not, right? So the Christian in the Christian life, like the writer of Hebrews says, we must be looking unto Jesus. Because the end goal for the Christian in the Christian life is to win Christ. To be conformed and transformed into the image of Christ. So we must be looking unto him. Because if we're not careful, we look around, we can see what this world has to offer. We can look at other people, and it's so easy to get off track, to get off the path that God has for us. So keep your eyes on the Lord, man. Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So we looked at number one, don't take your eyes off the Lord Jesus. But next, man, I want to share with you, find your strength at the Master's feet. Find your strength at the master's feet. Verse 39, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Mary found her strength at the master's feet. You know what's interesting, man, is you'll see in a couple of different passages, you'll see Mary at Jesus' feet. You'll see it when Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus dies. Immediately Mary falls to Jesus' feet and begins to weep and says, Lord, if thou hast been here earlier, then my brother had not died. In Luke 7, you see that she's at his feet again. And Jesus said that she washed his feet with her own tears and wiped his feet with her own hair. She anointed his feet with ointment and did not cease to kiss his feet. Man, really, Mary really loved Jesus. And it was because she ex personally experienced God's grace. Because earlier in Luke 7, we see that the Pharisees called her a sinner. Man, have you ever done wrong? And when you thought you should have been punished... Somebody showed you mercy, and you just appreciated them so much for that. I remember the first time I received a detention in the fifth grade, and I was so nervous because my mom, she's a, she's a hard woman, <laughs> and she really likes to discipline. <laughs> um, and I came home, and I was really nervous, but when I told mo my mom that I had received detention, she actually just hugged me and told me that it was okay just to not let it happen again. Granted, if she beat me, she probably would have told me she loved me, but I wouldn't have felt it in that moment. <laughs> but all that to say, you really learn to appreciate someone when they show you mercy. Consider the grace that Jesus showed you in saving you from your sin. Man. So if we're honest, we all deserve hell. And Mary, having experienced God's grace, held to Jesus' feet because Christ was enough for her. And she found everything she needed there. So we looked at don't take your eyes off the Lord Jesus, finding your strength at the Master's feet. But lastly, I want to share with you that might help us to have a revived reverence toward God. Rest in God's promise. Rest in God's promise. Verse 42. But one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And as you endeavor to love God and serve Him with your life, may you remember that God loves you much and much more that his love is unconditional. Paul said in Romans 8, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not tribulation, not distress, not persecution, not famine, not nakedness, not peril, not sword. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you got nothing from this message, then I hope you'll simply strive to love the Lord because he commanded you to do so. He said, this is the first and greatest commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Charles Spurgeon said this, and I love this quote. 
Be, be careful not to put all of your time and strength into that part of your life which is visible to men. But you forget that part of your life which is secret between you and your God. One thing is needful, man, and it's your love for the Lord. Sitting at the feet of Jesus and learning from His Word. I can have every head bowed and every eyes closed. I said earlier, man, that if you want revival, it's going to begin at the Master's feet. We have to realize that revival is only something that God can do. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do, Lord, and continue to do for us. Lord, we're not worthy, Lord, but thou alone art worthy. Lord, if we're, we want to see you do a great work of revival today, Lord, it's gonna, we're going to have to be empty of ourselves, Lord, and recognize, Lord, that it's really only a work that you can do. Father, revive our reverence toward you today. If we're struggling with pride, Lord, give us humility. If we're struggling with busyness, Lord, help us to set our priorities straight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.